Hi, it's Joe here at Willie Cottage. Um, sorry for the long absence on uploading my videos. If anybody's been following me on Instagram, um, you'll know that I've had a really bad case of laryngitis. So up until this week, my throat was still sore trying to talk for long periods of time. So what I thought I would do today um, is do a spinning video. So you can just sit there and meditate, sit and do spinning with me. I'll try and find some nice music when I edit this later on. Um, so what I'm doing today is a video, I'll find the video and put a link in below in the descriptions of the video that I did about preparing bats for woolen and worsted style um, so that you can achieve not just through your spinning but through the help and preparation of a bat to be able to get a really good, with the woolen, a really lofty um, bat fiber of crossing over the fibers and I have done a little video of how I've achieved that with one of the bats and this is the one that is spun in uh, been blended as a woolen fiber so the fibers with the woolen you want cross over and not be completely aligned because what you want with the woolen wool is to trap the air in the fibers so that when you're knitting with it it creates a really nice bloom and you end up with a thicker texture of a jumper, hats, gloves, scarves, that sort of thing. But it helps keep you extra warm. Um, the other one I've blended is in a worsted style blend. Now with those you want to keep the fibres aligned, which you do anyway when you're doing basic drum carding um, on your bats. So these, they've all gone in straight through. This is from a recycled bat that I've taken from my shop because um, I'm going to use it for a jumper that I want to make. So it was cosmic, but I've blended it with some neon just to add in a bit of extra pizzazz for me because that's just the way I roll. Um, so yeah, so it's been stripped into sections and then recarded again just to make sure that all the fibres are going aligned in a straight line, no crossing over of fibres. And this is an experimental spin just to see if there is a difference, even the slightest difference, in the end product of the yarn once it's been applied and set to a steam which I will do later on so yeah that's what I'm doing today so I've got 50 grams of each so it's gonna be one of those videos where I'll speed it up in sections slow it down in sections um, just so I can get back out there again I do apologize I've not been around as much it's one of those things when nature decides it wants to take you down it takes you down hard and I'm not someone for getting poorly that often um, so yeah that's the crux of that um yeah so i'll get on with that and i hope you enjoy any comments drop them below for future content that you'd like me to do hit that subscribe button for alerts i am planning to start doing my live videos on youtube on a saturday lunchtime from now on i'm having some problems with instagram they're not allowing me to save my videos onto my phone anymore and I had issues at the weekend where they wouldn't even allow me to post my live chat on the IG TV so I'm going to see about starting just coming straight over to YouTube and just stay here from now on for any type of live chats so mark that subscribe bell and hit that alert so you know when I'm on so I'll see you later
So, as most know, or those who are just starting out, when you're spilling, spinning a worsted weight, I feel like I'm coming backwards. Right, so when you're spinning a worsted weight, you want the fibres to all stay in this little triangle here. And they all want to be straight. And really, that is all you want to do. You don't want to be pulling your arm out. You don't want to be yanking the fibres back. You just want to keep your arm steady, rest it on your belly, and make sure that the nose fibres cross over from each other when they're coming out of the triangle here. So you've got this like triangular section, okay? And you're holding on to it. So as you saw me at the beginning, I was stripping my bat into lengths um, and pre-drafting them out. So all my fibers were all stretched out and ready for me just to spin straight from. So I literally want to gather those strands and make sure they stay straight and aligned and I just pinch and pull from that section. And when you're spill, spinning a worsted yarn, you're gonna end up with a yarn that's got more um, movement in there, and it's gonna be a lot smoother compared to a woolen fiber. And it's gonna have a draping in the yarn as well, so it becomes a bit more versatile. You, you can use it for a more variety of, of items that you want to have. Um, a certain look about them. A lot of people, this is a natural way. This is not natural for me. I'm finding it's really hard to keep my right arm still because it really wants to just pull out from behind <laughs> and just take this fiber further and then sitting just here like this, pinching and pulling and keeping my arm straight and trying to just keep in this triangle. This is not natural for me. So this is really, really hard trying to make sure that I actually spin worsted. So that's literally all I'm doing. It's lovely wool. This has got lots of sparkles in it. I've got a jumper that I have um, actually spun up in hand spun wool that I did wrong. I didn't, I didn't do my swatch tension, but I've actually got some lovely iron weight merino downstairs needing to get dyed up. So I'm, or worsted, sorry. So I'm gonna actually use these bats for the pattern work and I'm gonna re redo this jumper again. Um, it's got a pattern style of ruined stone. So I wanted something a little bit different. So that is it. That's generally the crux. You do not want your fibers to cross over. You want them all coming straight out of this little triangle section here with straight strands. And that is a worsted spun or anybody else that says I'm doing it wrong please let me know below in the comments and I will rectify it but this is what I've from videos that I've watched over the years and watching people do spinning on worsted wool this is more or less the crux of it which is is good when you're first spinning and first starting out because you're too scared to move your arms and you just want to try and relax a little bit You don't want to grip the wheel too tight in your hands. You want to make sure it's all straight. So just give it a little twist around sometimes when you've done your pre-draft, it twists about on itself a little bit. So just now and again, give your hands a little sugar around and straighten that drafting fiber out. So worsted, you can do worsted wool on your hand carders or if you've got any combs like balcony combs at home, or if you've got a hackle, a handmade hackle like I have, then you want to make sure that your fibers are all going in the same direction. And that's it, you want them linear. Um, no crossing, crossing of fibers. And then just get your dis if you're using hackles um, or carding combs with the long tiny needles inside them. Um, and then get your dis and draft off your rovings from those devices and then that's it you don't need to have a drum carder i just happen to have one obviously so yeah so i'm just going to carry on doing this and i will catch you on the other side when i start to ply
I've plied off approximately, but I think it's about 50 grams, 60 grams of a worsted blended bat with all the fibres are lined in, as I've explained before. And I've just done an Andean ball on my hand, which is brilliant. If you broke your knuckles and you need something to keep your, your hands in place, then this will do, because your fingers go below. Um, so I'm just going to take this off and I'm going to apply this up. And then I'll put it on the knitting or day, stick it to a skein and then steam set it. And then I will do the woolen one in a sec. So literally, it means that you can pull from the core. If you've not got a ball spinner then this is absolutely perfect for doing that but you can see there's loads of greens and pinks and on a purple gray sort of black background and there is sparkly bits in there as well so let's get this plied up and see how it's come out it's looking really well at the moment it's got a really good twist in there so it should spin up uh, apply up really nicely so i'm just going to get this on my lead up There we go. And um, yeah, so I'll see you in a bit.
Okay, so you've just seen me doing my rendition of the long draw. I can't go too far because I've got shoulder issues. So I get as far back as sort of here, but that's good enough for me. And it means that is when you're spinning woolen, it's a bit more of a free form sort of spin. You're literally just guiding the yarn, especially if it's short fibers, short stable length. Um, you're guiding the fibers along, but you're just literally pulling it. I mean, the easiest example is if you're using a roll lag or a roll log and you're spinning straight from that, but you do it as a slight, a, a long draw instead of a, a short draft, like you're feeding it. You want to pull the, the fibers out and it helps the air get trapped in there and because it's in a roll lag or a, ro uh, a puny or something like that the fibers are intertwining together and they're not coming in straight so even though i've blended this if you've seen on the previous clip blended this my fibers go in like like that against each other or like that against each other or literally just pulled it and then folded it over and pulled it again so they're not all vertically going in the same way so i end up just to create a little bit more air to go in with those fibers i just fold it over like if i was spinning um something really really soft like a haikuya or an, a surrey alpaca fiber and i'd carded that into a bat and then just fold over the lengths and then I just spin it from there and you literally end up with, with loops and even though the fibres are crisscrossing it means that I'm just helping putting a little bit more in there a little bit more extra crossing on the fibres letting more gaps accumulate so it can trap air afterwards so I've just got this last piece to do and then once I've done this one I'm going to have a whole ply it because I had to end up halfway through the worsted one never whole ply it because me, me cake decided it wanted to um, tie out on myself so I end up never whole playing like I think about the last quarter of that so that's what I'm going to do with this anyway so I literally I'm not I'm not doing anything I'm just literally holding on to the back end of this piece of bat and just gently letting the fibers go and do their own thing I'm not all I'm doing is making sure that I could pull it so far, but then if I, if I pull it too too quickly, then the fibres loosen out too much and I end up losing my, sort of my grip a bit. So I just let my fingers guide my yarn there, give it an extra kick and then in again. And then just let it do its own thing. I find this much easier and a very quick way of spinning in comparison to spinning in the worsted context i'm not that keen on sitting there and being that still by doing things i'd rather do like this i like to spin quickly and for me this is it this is my comfortable spot of spinning i can still do the worsted style but i end up doing it in the long draw So I mean, all the fibres are just floating around there, so they're just getting caught in as I pull out. There's no rule or reason as to which direction they're going in. And it's trapping all that air. I mean, even if you're spinning like this, you can make the wool as fine or as chunky as you want to. It doesn't really matter, it's up to you. And yeah, there are people out there that will do the technical terms. You go find them. They're on there, they're on the YouTube, they're on Instagram, they're in books, and yes, there is a technicality to it, and um, I understand the concepts and understand the rules that apply to it. But once you've got those rules down a pat, then just do your own thing because you enjoy it. Unless you're someone that likes to make sure, like facts and figures and everything taken, notes taken, remind yourself how you did this and how you did that. I totally get it. For me, that's not an enjoyable process. I prefer just to enjoy what I'm doing, get the technical aspects down to the point where I know exactly what it is that I need to achieve and then just go with it. And do you know what? I've got fluff in my eye. I can feel Angelina in my eye. It's always the same, isn't it? You always get Angelina in your flipping eye. So I'm just going to finish off doing this and I will point you down and just do the last that bit. It's getting a bit dark here now, so guide of lights just to keep me going. Mm -hmm. 
Now, there is benefits to spinning like this. Um, when you're carding the bats up and you want a worsted wool, then that's, that's great because it really does help you define the colours that you're using in the bat. But when you're carding with the fibres up, because they're all going in straight lines, but when you're card, carding a wool and you want it to, uh, carding a bat and you want the wool to be a woolen style fibre crisscrossing, it means that you're going to lose some definity in the colours that you've got in the blend. So you are going to, it's, it's going to be, be, end up coming out more of a mild blend than it is um, a more defined with the worsted because the fibres are going in the same direction and you can keep the identity of the colours while you're spinning that because of the triangular section that you need to make sure that you've got in check at all times. Whereas when you're spinning woolen, the fibres are coming at their own will. You've not really given yourself any control of it apart from the actual yarn bit here itself. Um, so for me, if I'm spinning woolen, I've got to accept that I'm not going to have any definitive colours. I'm going to have pops of colour every so often, but not all the time. But it is perfect if you're wanting to spin a tweedy wool. A wool with woolen necks in, so you can make an Aaron Tweedy jumper um, with the cable knits and you've got the lumps and bumps in there. This is what this... I, For me personally, that's what I think woolen spinning is best for is for spinning textured yarns or textured bats because because of the fibers and the way that they're going in direction to each other it means that those neppy bits the lumps and bumps the textures that are in the art carded bat means that they're going to trap them a lot more easier than what they're going to do if you're spinning it from a worsted point of view so there is good points and bad points to spinning wheel in certain ways or to card in but if you wanted to say want to card fibers and wills that are going to give you lots of texture and lots of lumps and bumps then make sure your fibers are crisscrossing over each other think of woolen and the airiness that you're going to achieve with that and that means that those fibers that are crisscrossing and not going all in the same direction are going to help sandwich those pieces and nets so sorry silk moments the mulberry silk the woolly, the woolly nets that you've got and they're going to tra help trap them into the yarn a lot more than what it would be if you were to be spinning a worsted straightforward linear yarn. Now with the linear yarn, i.e. the worsted, it means that you can do um, a lot more in the sense of silky wool fibres because a lot of the fibres will be short short staple length so you could probably spin a lot more with the bamboos on that sort of short draw um, you get a, a different style of wool as well it becomes more drapey so softer wools more elegant wools more defined um, luxury blends that you may be using cashmere in with it or camel alpaca in blended up with wools as well so they have the uses and the purposes some people like to spin worsted all the time regardless of what's in there some people like to spin on a long draw all the time At the end of the day is what suits you not what suits everybody else and that is it's just the way things are not everybody's the same and there's some of his rebels out there that don't adhere to all the rules. We know what the rules are, we know what the boundaries are, but we want to we want to just do what we love to do. So this is this nearly done. I'm gonna fold that over again and just catch the last of that little bit there. And you'll definitely see the difference once this is plied up. What I mean about the colours losing their character and becoming a bit more muted by folding the wool over and having the fibres crisscross over each other. But if I want to knit a hat or mittens, I want I want the, the wool to really trap that air when I'm moving around or wearing them, just because the air heats up the wool. 
and then that makes your hands warmer <coughs> or your head warmer which at the end of the day is the whole concept isn't it is to keep yourself warm so I'm just gonna take that off there put it grab this put that on there like Formula One racing car change right so next get my orifice hook stick that in there I find the middle oh I'm going to have to change my leader cables they are re really getting a bit grotty these days so I'm going to push that bobbin back a little bit right which way is it going okay so I'm just going to feed that on a little bit see what the balance looks like on that all right am I going the right direction I must be okay so now I want to make a triangle bring that tension down a little bit slow it down push this back a little bit because it's a bit too close to me for doing this.
Okay, so there's the final wools. This is the worsted one. And it's definitely got a really nice drape in there. Really nice. And the colours are really popping out quite prettily. And I will definitely be spinning up the rest of this wool in this worsted way. That's such a, yeah, a really nice drape in there. There's no stiffness to it. I haven't actually set it yet. I haven't been downstairs and steamed it, but I'm really quite happy with the way that's come out. In comparison, same amount of wool on the wooling blend, and it's slightly stiffer. I know you can't tell, you've not got a feely vision or anything like that, but there is a different consistency to this, and there is a bit more twist in there in comparison this sits really nice this one here there's no twists in there at all it's a really good steady spin it's got a really good handle on that look at that and the color is really pretty in there but this one here does need setting it's over twisted in places there's no consistency in the sense of um uh, what am I thinking of? Like an inner balance. Some parts are, some parts are really nicely spun. Other parts seem to be overspun. But then that could be to do with the way that I finished off that last ply in Navajo. But that will sort itself out and settle down anyway. And I'll probably use this in an, a weaving at some point. I don't think I'll knit with it. I think I'll definitely weave with it. But the colours are more scattered on this one, whereas on that one. You can definitely see where there's sections where the colours are consistent all the way through. This one is a little bit like that, but it's a more mixed colouring, not defined. So that's the conclusion for that. Make up what you will of it. At the end of the day, I'm no professional. I just, I just enjoyed doing a bit of spinning and it was a nice little experiment to see if there was any difference. Um, from spinning the worsted to a woolen style bat. Yes, there is a slight difference in the way that the bat feels. Um, I would say that with a woolen, it feels a lot more freer and easier to tear apart compared to the straight linear lines of this one. Um, there's more weight behind it. And it takes a bit longer to spin this up in this grade than it does to spin up the woolen one. But maybe that's because that's how I like to do a slightly longer draft and not sit so close to my wheel when I'm spinning and I find that's faster for me and this one definitely is held see there's neps in there there are bits of neps in there from the mulberry silk and I would definitely say if you're going to do any carding like I said earlier on if you're going to do any carding and you want to use neps and sari silk and lumpy bits and pieces blend it in a cross fibre direction so at least you've got something to trap in those nets because they stay in there, not a problem at all. This one, they become a bit more strained. There, that's got mulberry silk and oil there, but as you, because you're doing that short draft and pulling out from the triangle, you're catching that and you're actually pulling the strands itself and then locking in on a straight, straight um, piece of stable length of um, fibres. But yeah, no, I'm really pleased the way this has come out. I'm definitely going to do some more. Um, in the other cup in the rest of the bag i think i've got about 150 grams left of that fiber and see what i could come up with but yeah so i hope you enjoyed that video so i hope you enjoyed that it was a bit of a long-winded and a lot of it will be fast forwarded anyway but if you want any more tips or questions or just drop me comments down below um hopefully i can sort out a live this saturday on youtube so please do subscribe hit the subscribe button you'll get a little pop-up with bells on and click on the bell alert i only post videos up once a week anyway so you'll never get inundated sorry for my lack of absence on youtube the last couple of weeks as i say laryngitis is not a, it's not a happy friend when you need to talk <laughs> um so you take care of yourselves hopefully i'll see you saturday any comments and suggestions for future content put a comment in down below and where you see that thumbs up click that that lets other people let me uh, let them know where i am and how to find me on the youtube platform because if you don't hit that like 
then I'll become a secret and nobody will ever find me. You take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.